Thank you, Megan. And thank you, Ashish, uh, Mehul, Courtney, and the HGHI team. What a feast. And that wasn't just a breakfast, by the way. This has been a real intellectual, uh, 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 excellent set of presentations this, this morning. So I want to take the, the, the discussion beyond data and institutions to, to health systems, which is the, um, the subject of my research. So no one can doubt the promise of AI in health systems. So transitioning from poorly managed health and, and uh, morbidity at population level to highly targeted individualized um, interventions. Um, and, and the promise is uh, large, but we have a challenge. We have what, what I call an innovation misalignment in health systems. So on the one hand, we have sort of this convergence of innovation in, in big data, AI, machine learning, statistics, uh, analytics. We have biomarkers, um, uh, rapid uh, diagnostics. We have targeted therapies. But while all this innovation is happening upstream, not much is happening in relation to innovation in health systems. So has anyone been to Paris? Please put your hands up. Don't be shy. It's a nice place. Good. Does anyone recognize this image? Well, you have the name. It's not a difficult question. It's Hotel Dieu. Um, has anyone been to Hotel Dieu? It's a beautiful building. Uh, actually, it's the oldest, one person has, it's the oldest hospital that is currently functioning as a hospital. And when was it founded to see if the coffee is working? Anyone? When was it established? 1,200, Peter, very brave. Anyone else? <laughs> We're being recorded. <laughs> 1580. 1580, very precise, good. Seventh century, 651 to be precise. Founded by Landry, still functioning as a hospital, although it was burnt down and rebuilt. So when I say that in a, there is an innovation in the health systems, I'm not exaggerating. And any of you who work at health systems level will, will agree with me. So we have a challenge because we have all this technology and incredible innovation going into systems that are completely unfit for purpose, including the institutional and regulatory frameworks, which uh, Glenn and uh, Ryan and others have so elegantly demonstrated. So this is the first challenge. The second challenge is the institutional logic, which I think is more difficult to change. And I'm sure you all recognize this uh, gentleman, uh, or uh, Einstein. Um, he said, in science, he's doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. But we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. The problem is we're creating, on the one hand, these innovations, but the design in relation to health systems is still using the old logic. We're stuck very much in the past. So unless how systems change and the institutional logic changes, we're not going to get the scale up that is going to have population level impact. And I'm, when I say that, if you look at technologies, even for common problems, where there's been a huge global effort, such as management of maternal and childhood illness, even for the common interventions for which there's very strong evidence base, the scale up has not exceeded 50, 60% for many conditions, in spite of huge amounts of funding going into them from the Millennium Development Goals. So unless we fix the system, we're not going to harness the benefits of AI. So that requires, when AI solutions are being developed, thinking about downstream, how can we actually change the design of the health system, the governance arrangements, financing, including provider payment systems, and service delivery, including the use of human resources, so that the benefits of AI can be harnessed. And these are very difficult questions. Many countries I work in, I work across low, middle income, and upper income countries. But many countries I work in, the laws in relation to human resources go back to 1950s. So it's very difficult to change this. So the four challenges in relation to AI health systems are what I call the four A's. One is accessibility of data, very difficult to get there are lots of data, but actually difficult to access the data and use it. Secondly, applicability. We have data on those who present to the health system, but, and, but we don't have data on the heterogeneous populations that we need to serve. 
Third is algorithmic uncertainty. We have the challenge of replicability. We also don't know where the algorithms will lead us into the future. And finally, accountability. If something goes wrong, who is responsible? So currently, we're working at global level uh, as part of a couple of uh, sort of Lancet commissions to look at global readiness for introducing uh, AI solutions for diagnostics, um, as well as um, imaging, as well as uh, laboratory diagnostics. At country level, we're looking at health system performance in managing big problems. I think it's very important before technology solutions develop to address, as Adam and I think John said, what problem are we trying to solve? And there are lots of big problems. So tuberculosis, for example, recently um, uh, did a study looking at, in the high burden countries, almost, um, just looking at this, uh, almost 50% of the cases are not uh, treated or successfully completed. And there's huge variation among countries where people are not diagnosed, diagnosed but, but not treatment not completed. And third, we're looking at, we're working at institutional level where we're trying to use predictive analytics and care pathways to improve uh, outcomes for cancer. So very exciting opportunities, but unless health systems change, we're not going to get these innovations at scale to have population level impact. Thank you for your attention. I'm just curious, uh, what, if you, what you think of, for example, telemedicine, if you think that fits under systems improvements or if it doesn't, and also, for example, some of the innovation that's happening with medical imaging and this idea that a computer can replace a physician, is that, does that fall under a systems change or? Yeah, excellent questions. Um, so telemedicine, I would think of that as being an enabler, but when I talk about health systems, I we think more about the functions, such as organizational uh, governance, uh, the, the administra administrative systems, or the financing, um, or resource management, priority setting, and, and service delivery functions. There are many enablers in diagnostics, AI. These, these, are, these will enable these functions to perform better, so one, these inputs can be translated into outputs and to outcomes. And, and in relation to uh, human resources, do you know how long it took to get uh, nurse prescribing um, to happen in many countries? Something for which there was very strong evidence based. Decades, even in the European context. So making change in health systems is actually very difficult. I would be interested in your opinion, the fact that academic health centers around the country Mayo, Cleveland Clinic, Boston hospitals, et cetera, uh, are building facilities around the world. Hmm. Uh, and do you think those systems are being put in place that are modernized, or are they replicating what we have in the United States? I think excellent question. And I have a view. Um, so the trajectory of health system development in countries like the US or Europe, um, well, the first the currently functioning hospital goes back to the 7th century. So you have a very long tradition of the evolution of these systems. And the contexts were very different. But for many upper middle income or middle in low income countries, the changes that have affected upper income countries are happening very quickly. And the context is very different. So it doesn't make sense to follow the same trajectory. So we need to, that's why I'm saying that we need to change the institutional logic. There's no point incrementally trying to do what the West, Western countries or upper income countries have done over two, three, four, five hundred years. I think that's a huge mistake. We need to completely rethink, go back to, uh, go back to the table and redesign health systems so we can really harness the benefits of technologies such as AI. I think there was a question from Karim. Yeah, um, uh, how, how optimistic are you in the ability of the healthcare system to redesign itself? I'm very optimistic, actually, because where there are huge problems, there are huge opportunities. But it requires um, sort of not parachuting in and doing pilots or boutique examples. One has to really deeply engage, not to use a pun, uh, in sort of learning and, and uh, with policy making with countries. And that might take, uh, I think, answered 5, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years uh, to really achieve system-wide change. But that should not defer one from, from
from the engagement. What one should not do is to transfer just technology and push it into a system that is not fit for purpose. But the opportunities are huge because the inefficiencies and the performance, underperformance is really very great in, in most systems around the world.